on the, the impact of this data. It's interesting, I suppose, as a, as a narrative for the Bank of England when it goes out there and tries to explain to the country what's happening here. We're getting closer to rate cuts, and yet we're seeing this data bouncing back and we're coming out of recession. Is, is there a mismatch in timing there? How will, how will that fit for you? Yeah, uh, I think uh, on the surface it, it might seem like a mismatch. And if you look at the headline number, it was quite a strong GDP outturn. We were expecting, we in the Bank of England and consensus were expecting growth of 0.4. It came in at 0.6. That's a big surprise. But actually, the question now is whether, you know, it will, this, the growth will remain at this space and this sort of uh, high growth trajectory will be maintained. Our view is that it won't, and we're a bit sceptical, and today's data doesn't really change this view, because when you start looking at the breakdown of the GDP data, you actually see that a lot of it was driven by net trade. Mm. And within net trade, it was a fall in imports that sort of added to growth. And when you look at domestic demand, that has only grew by 0.2%. So the, it hasn't even recovered to the pre-recession level, let's say. So in a way, when you look at the components of the economy that are being affected by interest rates, rates, that's still um, pretty subdued. So in our view, it, it, we just don't think that, you know, okay. this is going to translate into so higher So it isn't momentum. as strong as it might at first appear then, this GDP trend. Yeah. And yeah. tell us about the, the, those sectors that are struggling right now, still coping with the higher interest rate environment, even as we talk about lower rates. That hasn't happened yet. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I think the fact we are expecting rate cuts uh, this year, we think the first rate cut from the BOE will come in June, and that will provide some relief. And there will be sort of growth drivers this year. We had the easing of financial conditions, we have the fall in energy prices, some income taxes, and that's all going to add to growth. But I think the main thing to consider still is that monetary policy will still be restrictive. So any sort of pickup on the growth that you're going to expect will be limited. Sam, why have the markets... The markets in so many ways have been muted in their mm. reaction to all of this. You've got a Bank of England that, that is sounding quite dovish, yet the market's barely budged. The banks run distance itself from the Fed, but the Fed US data is having a really big impact in terms of how we are positioned here in the UK. Is that something that, that when you talk to people, they're expecting to change, or is this, gonna, is this basically something we're just going to have to, and the bank is going to have to live with? Yeah, I think this is something that the bank's going to have to do. I mean, actually, it's interesting. So, so you know, I, I agree with Anna. I think the markets agree with Anna as well. Yep. You know, almost nothing moved today on, on the data. So, yes, the headline looked a little bit stronger. That could, you know, if, you just, if you're just looking at that, might raise some questions about strength of the economy and that leading into the Bank of England. But I don't think it does, really. You know, I think at the moment, wages, the wage data we're going to get uh, next week and then the inflation data we're going to get the week after that, that's where we'll really get to understand the, the Bank of England's thinking.